Save 10% with my code BOBBY10 on raw, organic, grass-fed and grass-finished freeze-dried organ meats from Grassland Nutrition. Link in the description box. Alright guys, welcome back to the channel. If you're new, my name is Bobby. Guys, today is super interesting video. Why I left Christianity. No, not by yours truly, Bobby's perspective, but by Yushua Evans. Many of you guys reached out to me since I started doing Islamic reaction videos and you said I should react to the convert story of Yushua Evans. However, he just uploaded a recent video in which he speaks about why he left Christianity and I believe that this would be of much more value to this channel and to the viewers of course. With no further ado, let's have a look. Why did I leave Christianity? It's a very good question. I have sure. talked about my story of converting to Islam in, in quite detailed length on a couple of other videos. Uh, one of them's here on my YouTube channel uh, called Why I'm a Muslim. And the other one you can find if you search in YouTube, How the Bible Led Me to Islam by Yusha Evans. You'll find that I think there's one yes. that has nearly 4 million views that's Those more popular, well known one if you want to go through the entire detail of it. Uh, but I wanted to keep this more sweet and simple and short and to the point and succinct uh, about why I left Christianity. And this is to give a call out there to Christians worldwide to look into your faith and for uh, my Muslim brothers and sisters, you know, maybe a little help of understanding why, you know, um, I had problems within Christianity and what ended up causing me to leave. Uh, I was born and raised in, in South Carolina, born and raised a Methodist, became in my teenage years more evangelical, Pentecostal, mm -hmm. uh, Baptist, uh, whatever you want to call that, and believing in the Trinity, believing the Bible, the inerrant word of God. Right. And I left Christianity um, when I was 17 years old, and I accepted Islam when I was 18 years old, uh, a little uh, bit over a year later. Early. And this was in 1998, and I've been a Muslim for the past 24 years. My major problem... It's very interesting to hear because he stuck with it. In Germany, I saw a bunch of conversions of teenagers and 20-year-olds, and they, however, dropped out of the religion later on. This is why when I hear people converting in their teens or in their 20s, I can't really trust it. Because even if I look at my life, I'm in my 30s now, in my 20s, I did many, many things, which I then came to turn my back upon. In our 20s, we do many irrational decisions. This is why to see him now in his 40s, 20s, five years later and still being a Muslim is of course impressive. My major problems with Christianity are, are, are two and this is what caused me to okay. leave. There are many other things that I found which if you want those details watch those longer videos but these two problems I'm going to talk about today are the reason for me leaving Christianity. Number one they revolve around the personage of Jesus Christ um, peace be upon him himself and the Trinity and him being God Sure. Um, and then also the veracity or the validity of the Bible as the inerrant word of God. Fair enough. I can totally relate. Those are my two major roadblocks as well whilst learning about my own religion, Orthodox Christianity. The Trinity doesn't make sense to me. I talked about it plenty of times. The divinity of Jesus doesn't make sense to me either. And that ultimately led me to investigate the Bible itself just to then find out that the New Testament hasn't been written by the true apostles of Jesus Christ. This for me was a huge deal breaker and led me then to study Islam. And now we're here. Personage of Jesus. I've always been a person who has reason, likes to use their brain, likes to think, likes to, for things to make sense. Sure. And you know, my whole life I was raised being taught in the Trinity that God is one but in three unique personages. Yes. That is God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. And these three are all God and they're all the same person. Yeah. And this is also part of the apostolic creed is that the that you have God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. And God the Father is the Son, God the Son is the Holy Spirit, the Holy exactly. Spirit is God the Father. But God the Father is not the Son, um, nor is the Son the Holy Spirit, nor is the Holy Spirit the Father, right. if that makes sense, which it does not. Mm. Uh, but 
This is the understanding. Moreover, there is a further explanation of this, that there is the essence of God and out of the essence of God, those three personas spring. So the one God is ultimately the essence. The one God would be what is known in Islam, Allah. This would be God. However, Christians understand it, that God revealed himself to us. So we as mere humans can understand him through his triune nature. The idea is that we understand understand God as the Father, that we understand God as the Son, that we understand God as the Holy Spirit in order for us to be able to relate to him. Otherwise, there would be no personal relationship. That is the theory of the Christians. And is that God is one in three unique personages. Yes. And for most Trinitarian Christians out there, they make no distinction between them. They're all equally God. Yeah. And they will say about Jesus that Jesus was fully God and fully man. Mm -hmm. And this is where the problem comes in for me. Because as I started reading more into the Bible in my teenage years, when I was like 16 years old, I, I wanted to be a minister. I wanted to be a pastor. Well, I wanted to specifically be a youth minister. I wanted to go out and preach the gospel. So I decided to spend a lot of time, you know, reading the gospel, spending time in them, looking at them, reading. I personally was thinking about becoming a monk. I want to live the ascetic lifestyle, get away from this creation and live as a monk in a monastery. About the life of Jesus, etc. And what I came to find was in contradiction to what I was taught to believe. Because if you believe that Jesus is God, Mm -hmm. You believe that he was fully God and fully man, as this is the Trinitarian belief. And if you believe yeah. the Bible is an errant word of God, then you're going to have a lot of trouble with various verses of the New Testament, as well as, you know, proving the validity of the Bible from a historical analytical perspective. Sure. I For agree. instance, one of my problems is to say that Jesus is God in the flesh and that he and God are one in the same, that Jesus was fully God and fully man. Mm -hmm. It goes against some of the things Jesus himself says in the new testament in the new testament and i could go verse after verse after verse after verse after verse but this would make this quite long um this is something i implore you to do if you're watching this video and you believe that jesus is god then go and look at what jesus says about himself in the bible go read the the, the new testament if you don't have a red letter edition go and get a red letter edition mm. and don't read anything except the red letters and which are you know reportedly to be the words of Jesus Christ himself, peace be upon right. him, and see what Jesus is saying. You know, throughout the entirety of the Old Testament, I read that God is one. Ashad, in, in the Hebrew the language. Father's that God greater is than one, I. One, 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 one uniquely well. one. I am the Lord your God and there is none else. Mm -hmm. um, Hero is the Lord your God is Ashad, is one. Um, I am a jealous God. Uh, part of the Ten Commandments, you know, have no other gods before for me or make nothing else equal. It's the first commandment. Me. God is one, 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 yep. one, one, one. And then even Jesus taught when he was asked, you know, what, what is the greatest commandment? He said, I can't tell you the greatest commandment without telling you the first commandment. And the first commandment is hero Israel, the Lord your God is one. Right. He used the same word, Ashad, mm -hmm. one, uniquely one. Um, and to love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your might, with all your strength, and then love your neighbor as you love yourself. Yep. He said, all of the law and the prophets hang upon these two principles. Hmm. This doesn't sound like a triune God or God. Jesus trying to tell people he is God. Also in John 14, uh, 14 and 28, Jesus said that the Father is greater than I. So if they are equal, Amen. Jesus is fully God, fully man, and these are three equal uh, uh, um, gods in the Trinity, why is Jesus saying that the Father is greater than him? So is Jesus, who is also God, less than God who is the Father, or are they equal? Or are they different? It makes no sense. It doesn't make sense. The core equality argument falls apart exactly at the point where Jesus says that about the last hour only the Father knows and I have no knowledge. This already destroys the whole core equality argument. Back in the day when I grew up as a kid, I was told that Jesus is the Son of God. I believed in God, one God, and that Jesus was his Son, whatever that meant. Then later on, people told me that God actually incarnated within Jesus. So I thought about it, mm, okay, there is God, and then there is the human Jesus, and maybe somehow God got into the body 
of that Jesus. Could be, I don't know. But then when I found out about the Trinity, all of that fell apart again. Because if you think about it, okay, you have God creating Jesus. Now somehow God enters into his creation through Jesus. Fair enough. But how come then that this human Jesus is equal to the God that just entered Jesus? No matter how you look at it, it falls apart. It doesn't make any sense. Matthew 24, 36, Jesus was asked about the day of judgment. When is the hour? He said, of that day knoweth no man, not even the angels in heaven, nor yep. the son. Only the father who is in heaven knows that day. Right. So Jesus is fully God and fully man. You have to stick to that principle. If you believe in that principle that Jesus is fully God, and fully man, you have to stick to that principle. Yes. Then why did Jesus not know or tell people he did not know when the day of judgment was going to be? Makes Either no sense. he knew when he lied or he didn't know. Therefore, he does not have the same knowledge that God has. Yes. Therefore, he is not equal unto God. Therefore, your Trinity concept is, is broken. Yes. So I started to see these things. When Jesus Absolutely. told Mary Magdalene before his you know ascension into the heavens, he said, don't touch me for I have not yet ascended, right? And I am going now. So I am ascending unto my father and your father, my God and your God. So Jesus is God, but he has his own God, exactly. who is God the Father. So God the Father, is it Jesus' God? Or is it, it, it started to really confuse me. When Jesus went to the Garden of Gethsemane, when he was being hunted, um, by by the the pharisees and again the explanation of the christian doctrine here would be that jesus was fully man and fully god at the same time somehow for whatever reason shifting consistently between godhood and manhood i really don't understand how that is explained at some point he doesn't know that the tree is not bearing fruit then at other times supposedly he is god again there is absolutely no consistency within that argument sadducees for the crimes of calling himself the king of the Jews. It wasn't because he was calling himself God. He was calling himself the king of the Jews. Right. Or they, they, they accused him of calling himself the king of the Jews hmm. because the Romans who ruled Jerusalem at the time would not have cared if he was calling himself a God. That, that don't, they, they, had, they had a, a um, plethora of gods. The point was he was calling himself the king of the Jews, which would rival the uh, king of the Romans, would rival the Romans, and therefore, it was a political issue. So this is why they agreed to arrest him. And even when Pontius Pilate in, interrogated him, he didn't see any fault in him. But to prevent an uprising from the Jewish population of Palestine, uh, of Jerusalem at the time, because they said, no, if you let him go, we're, we're going we're gonna to riot. Basically, they, they, they just kept saying, kill him, kill him, kill him, crucify him, crucify him, crucify him. He did it, uh, uh, agreed to it in order to settle down things because Pontius Pilate, if he allowed this to happen in Jerusalem, his head was probably be on a stick himself. So this was problematic to me big time. And it has always remained problematic to me when it comes to the Trinity, that if you believe that God is one in three, then it always remains the same. That God. Listen, I absolutely agree with this, but still I have a question left. And the question is, why since then Christianity started spreading with the doctrine of the crucifixion? This is basically my last hiccup here. I don't understand if it didn't happen, as Islam claims, why would it have become such a doctrine, such a dominant doctrine that spread for so many hundreds of years? If you have any explanation to this, guys, please let me know in the comment section the father god the son god the holy spirit are equal but jesus himself said the father is greater than i i don't know the day of judgment i ascend unto my god and your god when he right. went to the garden of gethsemane to pray he said father if it be thy will let this cup pass from me so number one he was praying to whom he's god who is he praying to and why is he asking for this cup to be passed from him meaning that he did not want to be crucified because he knew that if he was... Which then in turn would mean, however, that he got crucified. Crucified. I talk about this in longer segments, which, we, you know, in other videos, which we might get into detail in, in later videos. Okay. But the point was that he knew if he was crucified, this would be a curse under the law that he said he himself came to fulfill, which is the law of Deuteronomy. If any man hangeth on a tree, he is cursed. Yeah. So he did not want to do this. But he said, nevertheless, whatever is your will, let it be done. Meaning that he was subservient to the will of God, the Father. So if Jesus is God, he's subservient to God, the Father. But I thought he was God. So is he subservient to himself? And was he praying to himself to ask himself to remove himself 
from this cup and that if it didn't then he himself exactly right this would be my question as well because if jesus was god why would he have to pray in the first place there would be no prayer at all he doesn't need to pray if he is god moreover why did he go to the desert to fast for 40 days and got tempted by satan that wouldn't make any sense either because god cannot be tempted whatsoever self would submit to his own will was there, there, there. It could just go on and on. This made no sense to me. So I'm like, where yeah. does this Trinity concept come from? The more I dug, the more I realized that this is a Pauline theology. Mm -hmm. Paul, the self-proclaimed apostle who never met Jesus, never walked with Jesus, never. never talked with Jesus, never sat with him, is the one who began spreading the, the doctrine of the Trinity. And this is why his writings make up 13 documents of the New, or 13 writings of the New Testament, because he is the one who went around teaching that without Christ crucified, our faith is in vain. He was Saint the one that Paul. taught this, this, this Trinity Saint. theology because he understood that the rest of the world was worshiping a pantheon of gods, mm -hmm. therefore worshiping a triune God, which many cultures already had, would not be that difficult with Jesus as the Absolutely, you can even find that within Hinduism. Of, of the this Trinity whole is not realm. Human. And a crucified God is something that was also taught in many pagan religions, so it was very easy to accept. Mm -hmm. And then they just blended a lot of paganism, especially the pagan holidays of Easter, which is Ishtar, of Christmas, which Ishtar. is Saturnalia. They just blended all of these things together, mm -hmm. and it made it very easy for the people to accept Christianity. So it was more of a political move on, on the part of Paul, the self-proclaimed apostle, than anything else. Yes, it is true, because Paul persecutes the Christians, the early Christians, the original Christians, and he crucifies them until he gets his miraculous conversion and then ultimately changes everything it means to be Christian in the first place. And then all of a sudden you see the spread of Christianity within the Roman Empire. Paul, by the way, little fun fact, worked for the Roman Empire. So, being yeah. that there was issues with me with the Trinity, hmm. I started looking deeper into my second point, which is the validity of the Bible itself. I started sure. getting involved into the studies of textual criticism, which is the historical analytical uh, uh, study of the documents that make up the Bible as we know it today. <clears throat> the more I did that, especially within the New Testament, and if anyone has any doubt about this, please go and do your own research into the origins of the documents of what now makes up the New Testament. Um, there are plenty of great resources out there. Uh, Bart Ehrman, who is someone I, I, I studied much of his writings and much of his college work, not just mm -hmm. his books that he's written, which you can find all over Amazon, but even his college uh, um, textbooks that he teaches at the University of North Carolina, Chapel Hill on textual criticism and other authors of textual criticism, that the more you do your research, the more you come to find out that the Bible is not the inerrant word of God that I was taught my entire life, but it is a collection of documents that were found scattered all over the place. And there has always been long debate about what is and what isn't factual. Even with sure. the four gospels themselves, they are anonymous gospels. There is no... Um, concrete evidence of any sort of who wrote these gospels no um these gospels as i said previously this was the biggest shocker to me when i found out that the new testament the gospels haven't been written by the true apostles of christ but ultimately have been written in greek then when you look into it you find out that the apostles of jesus were fishermen and therefore pretty much illiterates they couldn't have written those accounts anyways let alone in greek of course and therefore you come to the conclusion that they've been written by greek philosophers are not the four gospels of matthew mark luke and john telling the same story they're four different stories about the life of jesus told from four different perspectives mm -hmm. all of them collected uh many many years after jesus christ peace be upon him was no longer on this earth there has been great debate about what should be in there what shouldn't be in things have been put in things have been taken out things have been altered things have been rewritten this is clearly written throughout the historical documents of scribes having written older uh, if you go and look at the older collections histor uh, um the the codex 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 sinaiticus codex Venaticus, you'll see all of these things yes. you just do a little digging do a little research you'll find that many biblical scholars even said that there were certain parts of the new testament that clearly were not in the original documents these were later ad later added on in the latin vulgate etc so what it came down to for me 
is that this book, even though it is, isn't an attempt, the best attempt that scholars can produce to write a document about Jesus' life, it is not an accurate representation of what Jesus himself would have said and spoken. Mm -hmm. Logically I, logically, I can... How about the Gospel of Thomas then? This was a document found in the Hamadi Library and is seen as the Gnostic Gospel. Let me know what you think about that. I'll tell you this for one reason. Forget about going through all the in-depth research about textual criticism, etc. Do that if you would like to. Mm -hmm. But Jesus, peace be upon him, spoke a language known as Aramaic. Yes. Aramaic, which is a um, Semitic language. Mm -hmm. Jesus every day would have used Aramaic language. He would have known... Hebrew and Koine Greek, yes, but his spoken language is Aramaic. The, the, the word he would have used to call God in his own language would have been Allah. And we as Muslims use the word Allah because it means the God, one God, mm -hmm. the only God, Ashad, alone. And there is no existing document in the, the Aramaic language that can date back to anywhere close to the time of Jesus at all, period, about what he said. So what we have, the oldest existing documents are Koine Greek. So at best attempt, and then those are translated into English. Um, at best attempt, we have people who wrote down what they heard Jesus was saying mm -hmm. by word of mouth that was passed on for a generation or two. Uh, I think Mark being the, the, the oldest we can go back, which is like maybe 60 years after Jesus is already gone from this earth. Mm -hmm. So people were passing word of mouth about Jesus after Paul had already been around preaching about the Trinity, etc. So that was what was becoming prevalent. That was written down in the Koine Greek. So nobody knows anything what Jesus truly said. They wrote down the things that were being said about him in Koine Greek. And that became um, what was known as the New Testament. None of those things we can say with any deniable, with any, with any plausible uh without plausible deniability, without saying that we know for sure there is no document of the New Testament, not a single stitch of it that we can trace back and say we know for sure and we can prove through chain of evidence that this was said by Jesus Christ himself. That is true. So therefore, what you have that was is a deal breaker for based me. upon faith true. and belief that it's true. That's mm. it. There's there's no documental, documented evidence behind it. Blessed are those that don't see but believe. And Trinitarian Christianity is based on the teachings of Paul the Apostle. Simple as that. Jesus taught the same oneness of God that was taught by God in the Old Testament. Mm -hmm. So that was the the basically the linchpin or hinge point which I decided to leave Christianity because if the Bible is not the inerrant word of God, then we don't know what God really wants from us. God is perfect. Listen to me, guys, men and women, brothers and sisters, ladies and gentlemen, however you identify yourself, God is perfect. God is perfect with no doubt. I don't think that anyone who has faith and belief in God, whether you be Christian or Jew or Muslim, would that would would disagree with me in saying that God is perfect. Therefore, it's if the God is perfect, perfect, anything that comes from God will be perfect by its very nature. And the Bible is not a perfect book. Therefore, this book is not from God. This was my deduction and it stayed by deduction for 24 years. And this is why I left Christianity. Mm -hmm. On top of the fact that I knew that what Jesus taught and preached was different than what Paul taught and preached and was different than what I heard my pastors teaching and preaching and was different than what modern day Trinitarian Christianity teaches and preaches. He okay. taught, hero is who the Lord your God is one. If Love the Lord with all your heart, with all your might, with all your strength, love your neighbors, you love yourself and everything hangs upon these two principles. Mm -hmm. When I was introduced to Islam for the first time, I had a very ill opinion of Muslims. Same here. I had a very ill opinion of Muslims. I thought that they would be the Antichrist and that they were, you know, terrorists, yes. etc. All of the things that a lot of you that might watch this video mm. might have an opinion upon Muslims. Yes, not any longer, but back in the day, I grew up in Germany and I hated Muslims and I hated Islam. I thought they are the descendants of Antichrist. And, you know, when I first went to the mosque in my local hometown, the imam tried to, the preacher tried to tell me about Islam and I didn't want to hear <clears> it. I wanted to know, do you have some proof? Because after my whole debacle with the Bible, I wanted proof of the validity of a religion. And sure. I was given a copy of the Quran. I was given a copy of the Quran. I took the, whole, the, the Quran home and I read it. And after reading it, I accepted Islam. Now, I know that was a knee-jerk reaction. Yes, I, I had not done any 
in-depth, detailed research on the Quran. Yeah. But reading it. Which it, is typical it, for that age group. This is why I say you have to be very, very cautious when it comes down to decisions made by teens or 20-year-olds. Its message resonated with me that God is one. And Islam's principles were very simple to me. And that is why I have remained a Muslim for 24 years, is that Islam's principles are simple. Believe in one God alone. Alone. In Islam, is called Tawheed. Mm. It's called oneness. Wahdaniya. Oneness. One. One God alone. Like God says, I, here is your I, the Lord, your God, am Ashad. In the Quran, he says, Qul ahad. Say, I am a, a God, the one. Only one. That's it. We don't worship anything other than the God who created the heavens, the earth, the universe, me, you, the, the fish, the animals, the star, the sun, the moon, everything. That is the only God that we worship. And we worship nothing else but him. This is pure, pure monotheism that was taught by God through all sense. of the prophets, through all of the messengers, through Moses, through Abraham, through David, through Solomon, through Jesus, peace be upon him, and through the last and final messenger, Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him. We worship one God alone. And the Quran has stood the test of time. 1400 years plus it has stood the test of time as God's inerrant word. We still have original manuscripts that were written down by people who memorized the entire Quran from heart, word by word from the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, and they wrote it down shortly after his death. Shortly after his death, it was written down and verified by all of the people who had memorized it. But even so, without it being a book that is written, is written, but without him being a book, it was written. It is a miracle. Uh, it is a miraculous book in that it has been memorized and it has been preserved through memorization since it was revealed. There are people who learned it directly from the prophet, peace be upon him, heart by heart, and they taught people and they taught people and they taught people. So it has always been passed down as oral tradition. The scholar who's taught me the Quran he can tell you every single person whom he learned it from, whom he learned it from, whom he learned it from, a verified chain all the way back to the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. And no matter where you pick up a Quran anywhere in the world, whether it be in America, whether it be in Saudi Arabia, whether it be in Australia, whether it be in New Zealand. I'm ignorant on this subject. I heard that Uthman apparently burned a lot of Korans. I'm not sure if this is accurate or not. Please let me know yet again in the comment section. I heard that there were differing versions and then a version prevailed. Please let me know what you think about it. Zealand, Norway, Portugal, Spain, it is going to be the exact same book because it has been preserved through this oral tradition. If you were to destroy every single copy of the Quran today, every single one of them was disappeared today. Muslims could rewrite that book and have millions back in production within a week. And ex it would be exactly the same way that it was. This is the miraculous nature of the Quran. It has been preserved through oral um, tradition. tradition, as well as we have documented history of how it was compiled directly after the death of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. Mm -hmm. So this is why I have Christianity because it was against the teachings of God. God is always taught that he's one. Jesus always taught that he was one and that the father was greater than him and that he, and that it was his God. And the prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, taught the same thing. The only difference we find in this whole link of chain is Paul the apostle and the people who were around him. Can now, that to me shows me that if you truly want to follow Jesus, and that's what it means to be Christian. Christian means to be Christ-like. If you truly want to follow Jesus, then you would follow the way of believing in God alone with oneness, with oneness. And that is the way of Islam. That is the way of the religion followed by nearly uh, 2 billion Muslims on the planet Earth today. So those of you watching this, do your research. You don't have to take my word for anything. Go and look it up for yourself. Go and read a red, red lettered edition of the Bible and see what Jesus said himself. And you will find that he taught the same thing that I am teaching you now that God is one, the same thing that Prophet Muhammad taught, the same thing that Adam, I mean, excuse me, uh, Adam, the same thing that Abraham, the same thing that Moses, the same thing that David, the same thing, they all taught the same thing. God is one and you worship him alone. And his inerrant word today is the Bible. The reason, I mean, not the Bible, the Quran. Uh, the reason why the Fly Bible slip. isn't the inerrant word of God is because it wasn't meant for us. It was meant for, the, the gospel was meant for the children of Israel. Even Jesus himself said, I was not sent, but to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. So that, that book was meant for them. It wasn't meant to be preserved for you and I. But the last and final revelation of the Quran was meant for all mankind. It is a universal book. It is a universal message. 
Islam has always been a universal message since the, since the beginning of time. Worship God alone and obey him. Simple as that. That is what we as Muslims teach. Worship God alone. Do what he wants you to do. Try to live a righteous life. When you make a mistake, because this is where the big linchpin comes in, salvation through Christianity. Salvation comes through the blood of Christ or God dying uh, for our sins. God dying. God, yes. can, God cannot die. God cannot die. I would say that God is the absolute opposite to creation. Therefore, if you die, God does not die. You are temporary. God is eternal. You are limited. God is limitless. It's very, very simple. If God can die, we're all in trouble. God cannot die. <laughs> in Islam, That's salvation great. comes through repenting for your sins and, and holding yourself accountable for yourself in this life. And through repentance, we find cleansing of our sins. Through that repentance to God, because our sins are against God, we repent to God. If we make sins against human beings, we try to make amends to them. But we, we turn to God and God alone is going to decide our fate on the day that we meet him. So I hope this has Simple. been some help to you. If not, and you don't like it, that's fine. I'm just here to deliver a message. I am just a, messen uh, a, a, a person delivering a message. I am just a parcel deliverer. And just like the postman, I'm just delivering you a message. And um, if, if it helps you, I, I'm, I'm grateful for that. And I look forward to continuing this series on some other uh, topics related around Christianity and Islam, etc. But until the next one, take care of yourself. And to my brothers and sisters out there watching, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. May the peace, blessings, and mercy of God be upon you. All right, this is it for today's video. Long enough as it is, so I'm going to cut it off here. What I liked about his message is that essentially it boils down to simplicity. I personally believe that truth is simple in its essence. It cannot be overcomplicated. In the Bible we read as well that your Lord is not a Lord of confusion. So therefore anything that confuses you, of course, brings you away from God on a daily basis and hence cannot be from God. All right, guys, but this is it for today's video. If you liked it, leave the thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed already, guys, please do so. If you want to support this channel via Patreon, for example, all the links are in the description box below. Thank you so much for your ongoing support. And as always, may God bless you all. Much love and peace.